Ferrite suppression cores all look the same, and up until now, there wasn't a convenient way to tell what frequencies they worked on just by looking at them. The popular Nano VNA can be used along with ZPLOT software to graph impedance over frequency to identify these unknown ferrites. Suppression ferrites generally fall into three impedance ranges, low range, less than 20 MHz like our FR73 mix, mid-range 20 to 200 MHz like our FR31, 43, 44, and 46, and high frequency above 200 MHz like our FR61. Knowing which range your unknown ferrite core works in is critical to achieve EM compliance. To measure the unknown ferrite cores, we'll use an SMA male to BNC female adapter, which in turn will couple with the BNC male screw terminal adapter. The number 22 enameled magnet wire will pass through the ferrite ID and make connection to the screw connections on the adapter. Use a single pass with the shortest length of wire possible. As handy as a Nano VNA is, its interface is somewhat difficult to use. An outboard program called Nano VNA Saver fixes this problem by allowing you to control the VNA from your computer and save the touchstone files for later analysis. This program is available at no cost at the website shown on your screen. After connecting the Nano VNA to your computer and opening the Nano VNA Saver program, click the Calibration tab and run the short, open, and load calibrations with the standards that came with your unit. Once calibration is complete, return to the main screen and set the sweep control to run from 50 kHz to 900 MHz. We are now ready to make measurements on our unknown ferrite cores. After attaching the unknown ferrite to the VNA via the BNC SMA connector, we're going to run the sweep, tab down to the file section, and save the one port S1P file to your hard drive for analysis. We'll name this first ferrite bead Unknown 1. The VNA Saver program is primarily used just to control the VNA. To actually look at the data, we'll use another program called ZPlots which is also available free of charge. ZPlots is an Excel-based program that plots impedance and related parameters. It's a powerful program that can take the touchstone files that our VNA produces and it turns them into impedance graphs. After opening the ZPlots software, we will load the data from the sweep of our own unknown ferrite bead. Once loaded, the data is generated we will click on the custom tab at the bottom. This brings up our impedance versus frequency plot and can see large impedance peaks between 10 and 20 megahertz. Now let's review our ferrite impedance chart. From this we can see that our unknown ferrite bead is most likely FR73 as the others FR31, 43, 44, 46 all have much higher impedance peaks. Now let's test our second unknown ferrite bead in the same manner we did the first. Again, using the SMA BNC adapter and the shortest possible length of number 22 enameled wire, hook the device under test to the VNA. Running the sweep again in ZPlots and saving the S1P file to our hard drive, we will call this file unknown number 2. If we look at the resulting impedance curve in ZPlots, we can see that the impedance peaks much higher than the first bead. After reviewing our PINs chart, we conclude that the unknown is most likely one of the mid-range suppression materials such as FR43, 44, or 46. So now we can see how the mini VNA along with some free software can identify the suppression ranges of unknown ferrites. However, we still don't know how accurate the actual impedance readings are. In the next video, we will benchmark the mini VNA against the lab-grade VNA for accuracy.